Systems have failed. People have failed. Political powers have failed. Technologies have failed. Scientists have failed. Chernobyl was not a single moment accident. It was a disaster made and meticulously, unwillingly, unconsciously prepared by the USSR's reality. Hello guys, I was supposed to end this miniseries last Sunday, but during the work on the material it became apparent that it's too good of a story to sum it up quickly. Instead, I give you another episode today. So the previous video was directly about the Chernobyl disaster. I have explained the pre-accident situation. What happened on the shift before the night one, when the reactor exploded? What was the reason behind the sudden drop of power output? and what computer systems were the operators using. This time, I will continue exactly where I left a week ago, when the reactor gave a clear signs of xenon poisoning. If you haven't watched it before, it's best you do it now. So, let's start with today's episode. RBMK Design and History, Part 11 Hours minutes, seconds. That's how the RBMK reactor core explodes. When the RBMK in Unit 4 at Chernobyl nuclear power plant started to stall, it was just past midnight. Due to changes in plans, the operators of the night shift were supposed to carry out the previous shift tasks. Because of that, the reactor wasn't ready for the test that was scheduled to be performed at least 8 to 10 hours before. All this, including the particular decisions about the safety systems, led to xenon poisoning, which I explained in the previous video. Then, the reactor felt this phenomenon itself, and the power dropped below the planned level. It should not reach lower than 700 megawatts, while suddenly, the RBMK slowed down further to dangerous 500 megawatts. What happened in the control room? The power control was switched. Usually, the LAR was running, local automatic regulator, but the power drop forced it to be changed to the AR, automatic regulators. This was necessary to maintain the required power level. Now, let's stop here for a second. What would happen if the power dropped further? I have checked the thesis from the USNW in Sydney from 1971, published 15 years before Chernobyl. This clearly says that the xenon poisoning was a known phenomena, but we have to try to imagine what could happen next in the Unit 4 in Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The paper states, quote, when a nuclear reactor is shut down rapidly from a high neutron flux level, the xenon concentration in the fuel elements rises to a level many times higher than the normal operating level. Translating it a bit, if the reactor power output was high for a significant time, like it happened in Chernobyl during the day shift, slowing the reactivity level quickly would increase the production of xenon to a many times higher level than it should be at. So, what would happen to the poisoned reactor? It would have to be shut down. The paper also says that in this case, the reactor is often impossible to restart. Operators have to wait until the xenon concentrations falls to certain acceptable level, which can take at least a few hours. Of course, this level could be different for different reactors. But the so-called xenon pit is a state in which the operators can't actually do anything of importance, of course, having in mind the safety guidelines. But these were not the priority for the power plant chiefs. On one hand, shutting down the reactor would mean postponing the test, necessary to officially commission the Unit 4. They were under pressure to make it happen quickly, as the USSR's plans didn't include any holdups. 
on the other hand, besides political and personal issues, there were the economic reasons too. Shutting down such a powerful reactor could mean the loss of hundreds of thousands of US dollars equivalent in power, and the Soviet Union needed that constant flow of the power supply to its grid. After all, the test was pushed from the day shift to the night shift because of the orders from Kiev. These two reasons would mean not only failing the schedule and being held responsible for it before the USSR's officials, but it could also mean being treated very harshly by the political powers because of loss in energy supply. Knowing how the Soviet Union handled that kind of accidents, we could be pretty sure this situation could be seen as sabotage and mean facing a firing squad for operators, deputies and directors. So that's why the operators and deputy chief engineer Dyatlov didn't stop there. It would be safer for the reactor and the power plant, but not for them personally. At least, that's what they probably thought at the time. Let's get back to the automatic regulators, which were switched to due to decreasing power output. These were automatic systems that would help to handle particular situations. In this case, increasing the power output. The AR-1 activated and removed four its control rods automatically, which increased the neutron flux, reactivity, which in turn increased the power output a bit. But the AR-2 has failed because of the imbalance in the systems. Computer recognized the changes in the ionization chambers. Then enters Leonid Toptunov, recently made a senior engineer. As he was probably told to, he reduced power further to stabilize the AR2 sensors so that they could withdraw another set of control rods to increase the reactivity. Because of many factors, xenon poisoning included, the reactor suddenly dropped to a level of near shutdown state. Probably it was around 30 megawatts of power output, and that was an RBMK which should achieve around 700 to 1000 megawatts to perform the test. As you may guess, that sudden power drop was a shock to the operators, Dyatlov included, as he was still present in the control room of Unit 4 at Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Even now we can't exactly say what was a direct cause and the exact circumstances of the situation. As I mentioned before, the RBMK was so big, the reactivity was often different in particular parts of the reactor, and that may have been one of the reasons. The measuring systems being unreliable included. After all, the operators should precisely know what was happening in the reactor core at all times. Despite that, Dyatlov reported that the power drop was a result of a fault in the AR2 system. But this didn't change the fact, the reactor was producing less than 5% of the minimum initial power for the test to be performed. So here they were. On one hand the operators had some of the safety systems turned off and the reactor being in a near shutdown state, partially because of the xenon poisoning. On the other hand, they had a test to perform, with a high demands from the power plant's director, with the Atluv being present and putting additional pressure on them. You should understand me properly. No single decision was responsible for the disaster. It was a series of bad reactions, malfunctions, poor quality of safety system and measuring apparatus. But then they have made a decision. A decision that, at least in my opinion, was probably the most significant one in the whole Chernobyl disaster story. Despite all the readings of the computers, all the indicators and all the experience, they have decided to increase the power. They removed additional control rods, which in turn made the hard to control RBMK reactor even more unstable. The clock, hanging on the control room's wall, showed around 30-40 minutes past midnight. They didn't know it yet, but in less than an hour, they would stand in the center of the biggest and scariest human-made disasters in history.
Thanks for watching. If you like this mini series, I have a good news for you. There will be an additional episode in which I will cover the final moments before the disaster, as well as during and shortly after it. I could say I'm sorry about prolonging the RBMK Design and History miniseries, but I'm quite sure you're actually happy about it. And that makes me even more happy. As always, I encourage you to write your thoughts on the subject in the comment section. And, as always, if you have an idea what could I cover in the weeks to come, feel free to write it. I promise I will read all of your suggestions. That's it for today, guys. Take care. Stay safe and see you next week.